Hello everybody, welcome to the CCL Season 54 second round match between Rick Reckless and his amazing goblin team and Andre and his uh, pretty okay Nurgle team. Uh, Rick has done loads of TV, he's got Ripper, he's got Morg, he's got a wizard and he's got one bribe. An interesting strategy here from Rick, a kicking and not fielding either of his stars or any of his weapons. So if you're going to do this, I feel like I feel like this is a completely like you know a pretty good tactic. Problem is it's obviously really risky on the uh, weapons. So maybe if you're going to set up like this, maybe start with a bomber. Um, but maybe just don't set up like this. Maybe just you know set these guys up all the way back here. Full defensive Daka, save yourself some hits because it's really not worth trading a uh, mighty blow hit for a core bomb hit. But. I guess trading hits lets you get lucky, and you've got region on the ogre uh, on the trolls. So you know this is an absolutely horrendous matchup for it. Far worse than the first round match versus Hancock because Hancock's team wasn't as good as this, and getting a few more inducements doesn't really help as much, does it? Um, so yeah, really nice warriors. Full claw on warrior. Three ones with block guard, one with dodge. Beast's got guard and stand firm. Full claw pommer. Hope, hoping to get tackle after this game for the next round. The next round that he will inevitably get to. Pretty injured uh, Pestigore. Sucks. And uh, Shuran's might go tackle. So yeah, pretty decent. Not actually that, not as good as I thought actually. So not, maybe he's not much better than Hancock's team. Um, but still, far, 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 far better than Rick's team. <laughs> and he can't, yeah, exactly. The stink, the stink is really terrible for the goblins, right? Like, completely, completely kills their throws a lot of the time. So. But yeah, he does get to make this mighty blow hit because of not running away. And <laughs> gets the KO on the beast. Amazing. Hello, Sol. Indeed. An amazing match. Almost rookie goblins versus Big Nerd. Big Nurgle boys. Yeah, but this is the problem, like, is is it worth getting that mighty blow hit to Clawpon? Like, you've got to get, you've got to get lucky. But, like, that is one thing that Rick likes to do better than anybody else, I think. You know, other people can understand when they've got to do it, but Rick seems to just enjoy when he has to get lucky to win. <laughs> wow. I mean, they're not going bad. They're not going badly yet. Trades KOs, but I, yeah, it's interesting, right? Because he has got the regen, but I just really don't think Mighty Blow on Armor 9 is worth giving away a claw bomb here. <laughs> also, like, that claw bomb hit increases the chance that you have to field your secret weapons on the last turn. If you're three players down, you've got to field a secret weapon. So, that to me really really makes me just want to set up like this. You could have set up like this and you would have, uh, you'd have had another one, one or two players on the pitch still. Very minor quibble. Of course setting the way up the way Rick did gave him a chance if you got like a blitz I guess to throw a teammate. Um, but didn't have many chances from setting up in a normal place. I wonder if you just start fouling here as Andre. Three reserves. Maybe a good idea to just start instantly fouling goblins to try and uh, whittle down the numbers to get rid of the 
to get rid of the uh, secret weapons. Like, I know it seems stupid farming goblins, but they have got stunt. And you could easily get loads of assists. So maybe there's, maybe that was the play to just foul these uh, foul these gobbles. Now oh, the pull goes great, isn't it? Really nice turns from Rick here, uh, screening everything off nicely. I guess maybe these could be one closer. But then if, he, well, he couldn't be. Because if he's one closer, you can get this, didn't one. He could have been one closer. And then maybe if he's up here, then he could have been one further forward to protect the whole goer. But not much, not much different. This is a very, very solid from Rick. It's just kind of nitpicking. But like, but well then that's the thing, right? When you are a massive underdog, that's when you can. That's when the the slivers of equity really come out, don't they? And that, like, you know, the tiny things that you could have done better. You could have maybe given yourself a tiny bit more of a chance. Let's see. Rick Gier flying onto the sideline here. This reminiscent of, uh, I can't remember the coach name. Frankenstein, I think he was, on Fumble, who uh, would regularly get his player surf rather than claw pond. <laughs> and that dodge there really is worse than dodging anywhere else because now it only takes this one noble warrior to set up the surf of the uh, troll easily. Mm, pushing at the wrong square there, probably right. You should have pushed him here so you could pom him. Like, ultimately, pomming... Pomming things is better than surfing them. <laughs> yeah, it was Frank. It was Frankenstein something. I'm pretty sure it was Frankenstein. Loads of people hated him for it and said it wasn't competitive. But it was. I did it myself loads. Like, I, def I wasn't as bad as him. But I defensive dackered pretty much every game with Nurgle. Just set up in a rule of five back here. Because you know you just can't you can't afford to give people claw palm hits basically. Yeah, exactly. It's it's kind of crazy. It's it's probably with the same like a lot of this anti concede crowd in Blood Bowl. Like two and three are like you're spoiling my fun by conceding, aren't they? It's like, Pretty selfish. Hmm. There you go, so anti concede. I'm not saying people who are anti concede are pieces of shit, but there's some people. VIPs even who think that uh, people who get conceded against in Blood Bowl 3 should get rewarded because, you know, they've missed out on the chance of valuable SPP. Mm, yes, but you're also getting a free win with no deaths. So. And also, you're not playing for development. You play to win the game. Hello? There's no point in playing just to play. Yes, yeah, doing the fouls, maybe it's a little bit too late, but he is getting to foul the higher quality um, pole goer rather than scumbag line -off.
<laughs> yes, exactly, Sandy. Yeah. I always thought that was the ultimate troll move. Yeah, this is a replay thing, Golo, yeah. This is a replay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's gone about the same speed. It has gone about the same speed. As it went in real life. <laughs> See, I, that's why that's why I got the like the pictures right was to cover that, and then um, the the CCL logo, the CCL logo, and the commentators covered that bar. But now with using this trophy, uh, the the new Chalice trophy, it doesn't it doesn't cover up that space anymore. So I had to just use the uh, the spoiler bar. <laughs> yeah, well that is funny, isn't it? Both people got what they wanted from the game. Like that's that's good that's a good thing. It's very cool. So anyway, really lucky from Rick there. You know, made loads of KO rolls, so he gets to keep all of his secret weapons off. Like if he hadn't failed if he had failed two of those, he would have had to lose his secret weapon. But um Lovely here. Bit, bit of a mistake here by Andre, right? These uh, these no Gorias should have probably been two over so that they couldn't get blitzed away. So the Warriors should have probably been two over here. Um, to keep their stink. But as it is, Rick can ha if with depending on the kick of course, Rick can hand off to one of these on the sidelines and then lob them with either Morg. And a slight mistake here, look at this. He had them. He had two there, and he, he tried to set up, but this one was back here, and he's just moved the wrong one, right? He had this one on the sideline, and he's just moved this wrong one accidentally. Because um, it doesn't make any sense to have him there. And Rick gets the very lucky kick of right to give it to him, but unfortunately it's the wrong one. And then, if the troll had hadn't stupid, he could have pushed the Nogal Warrior out of range anyway. Which is why the Warrior should have been two away. Also, if this was Blood Bowl 3, Rick would have four rerolls for this one turn attempt, which shows you how much more powerful stunties are in Blood Bowl 3 rule set. And he rolls a three on the catch, so if he had just put him in the right square, he would have made the catch. Dice. Ripper does get the throw from the sideline, though, which is nice. And he can aim for him. And he's just in range. Glorious. 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 So, I mean, that is an absolutely perfect half of Rick, right? Absolutely perfect. That guy comes back. So he's taken zero damage, and the beast stays out. So he's actually, not only has he, uh, <laughs> he's actually outbashed the Nurgle. He's actually outbashed the Nurgle. And it's 1-1. One, one. Got the wizard. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And despite everything going as well as it possibly could have done, it's still rough, right? It's still rough. His chances are still not great because it's not going to be easy for him to stall out the half. And if he doesn't stall out the half, like, you know, he might have to use the wizard to score. He's unlikely to be able to stall out the half. Chances are Andrew will have a, a chance to score back and make it 2 2. So it's. Um, it's ridiculous that like this has been played and rolled about as well as possible and it's still not great. <laughs> it's still not great. Like the position is great, but like the uh the future chances still aren't that good. 
but I mean obviously unbelievable, unbelievable to be in this position. Of course, Rick could just remove loads of players now. Of course, no plus two on a uh, Morg, but still pretty good. To hold the sideline uh, a little bit PC and not get uh, not get instantly removed. It's something that Eliod learned from Yudlaga and then told Rick. <laughs> I kind of like not moving in there, honestly, and just still hold, still holding the sideline there a little bit. I didn't like him moving in. Didn't like him tucking in. Oh, and me didn't like this move, right? This move could have come back for the foul. Another kill. Glorious. Yeah, this guy could have been this guy could have been one up, right? And he could have had an extra assist for this. Obviously, you have to foul now, right? Even if you're the kind of person who wouldn't have fouled before with that with that KO, you have to foul. Now. Oh, and he would have still failed even if he'd had the extra assist. He could have had two more though. He's moved a guy in after. <laughs> He's moved a guy in afterwards. If he moved him in before and moved this in, he would have had he would have had the plus two. So he could have he could have broken AV. If he had just played a little bit differently. Or better, if you prefer. <laughs> this is a lovely little player here. Takes the ball down. I would have taken the push, personally. Really surprised he didn't take the push here. Because if he'd taken the push, he pushes the warrior into Ripper. Ripper comes up here. And then you've got your claw pumping Ripper. Four, five, six, seven... Two dice, Claw Palm Ripper, Bob's your uncle. I thought that was kind of crazy that he chose to knock down a goblin rather than get 2D, 75% Claw Palm hit on Ripper. But, takes the ball down, gets the removal. Interesting turn for Rick here. It's all a bit awkward with the ordering. Would have been really nice to have blitzed this guy. Uh, you know, armor seven, block claw mighty on three D. One, two, three, four, five, six. But you see, if he goes there, but then that's as far as the troll could get. So he just couldn't really get three D. He would have had to like dodge the goblin and stuff, which he couldn't really afford to. Oh, thank you, Baron Bucky. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's like uh, it's. There is the that is the two the two ways of doing it. Like it's it's impossible to like talk about the game as much with other people in the booth. <laughs> like it's just genuinely impossible. And then obviously I'm less inclined. It's also impossible to be as jokey. Not only is less inclined, but it's also just impossible to be as jokey. I thought I I, I quite liked um, moving the fanatic over here this turn, right? Because this is one here like. You don't want to score early, sure, but also you want to score, right? And goblins are terrible at scoring touchdowns. <laughs> They're terrible at stalling out the half. They're pretty bad at scoring at all. So I feel like moving the the uh, ball and chain over here and maybe he's drawing some heat this turn would have been a fine decision. Absolute scumbag. So again, lovely, lovely push into Claw Palm. Gets one hit on Ripper and casts him into Norwegian. So there you go. A fair bit of luck from Andre there. And funnily enough, right again, if he'd moved there, if he'd moved this guy, maybe he could have protect him a bit, maybe this guy could have moved protect him. And he gets to nail the chainsaw as well. And instantly removes the chainsaw. Which to be fair you would expect the chainsaw to move it. Power apple from Rick. I quite like the power apple. And with that dodge fail, 
And it's going to be a great turn from Rick here getting forward. And really mortar down the sideline here. We don't hit Andre, no, Pedro. Andre, Andre is totally fine. He was not involved in any of the UC stuff. He does the uh, PI stuff, which is a podcast rather than the cheating ring. <laughs> so yeah, Andre is totally fine. This this sucked right having to do that dodge before. Like it was, the ordering was a bit messy, uh, like not bad from Rick, just like awkward for Rick. But he managed to managed to get a really nice progression here. And then in comes the how's this for a fanatic turn? By the way, first turn gets there, second turn hits him, third turn he's on four players, absolute god tier fanatic. And now all of PC's doubts about putting the fanatic on one side are erased. <laughs> Incredible fanatic move. And look at that, 4D doesn't get removed. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. It was very lucky, but still, I mean, that's what it can do, right? It, it can draw some attention. And it's it's a lot more protective. And even if he lost lost it that turn, it would have uh, wouldn't have been that bad. So here's an interesting one. Here's an interesting turn. One of the more interesting turns of the match. Both Elliot and I really liked advancing as far forward as possible this turn. Uh, but Rick didn't. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean that's all it is. It's not that exciting. But, um, like, it's hard, right? Because the trolls are terrible and you don't want to hit with them. But, like, this. Oof, look at that. <laughs> he gets the loner. He could also have pushed him here and then chained his troll onto these and stuff. So, there was things he could have done. But then, obviously, this is a 3D. He ends up not getting further forward. And, in fact, what he could have done is, rather than moving him back, he could have moved this goblin forward. And move the uh, move this guy over, right? I can't. Or move, you know, this goblin could be here or here, and the pogo could be here because you really want the pogo in scoring range, right? By moving the pogo back, the pogo takes himself out of scoring range here. And if Rick makes a mistake here, I think this was it. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I did it. Th this goblin could have been here, here. Here, any of these four squares, in fact, any of these four, well, not that many gets served. So, any of these three squares, this goblin could have been in, and the uh, pogo could have been one square forward. It just moves him back, and that could have that could be the most costly move in this match. Because, you know, with this goblin not being here or here, it means that, uh... Oh, no, he'd have got the 1D anyway, right? You'd have put the assist there. No, no, you wouldn't have done. Yeah, I like blitzing with Morgan moving pretty forward. Yeah. I definitely like blitzing with Morgan moving pretty forward. Just because they're goblins and they're rubbish, right? And, yeah, see, if this goblin's here, this is, this is not a 1D. He gets the 1D. Gets the pow. And gets the Kaz. So, yeah. <coughs> Andre has made a two dice block on Ripper and cast him, and a one dice block on Morgan cast him. So, a little bit lucky from Andre. And now, Rick's in like so much trouble, right? So, he throws in the fireball there. Um, interesting fireball, really. I, I think maybe even just bolting this guy would have been better there. Because. You know, you're 75% to get one of these town. 
which you need to to be able to blitz this guy or this guy. This does open up the blitz on this tackler here, which I really like, because you can't score this turn. So I actually really like blitzing the tackler and uh, and going through, but. Yes, Bolton. Yeah, I, I prefer the Bolton just go down the sideline, but. You know, it, it, hard to say again, right? You're, um. You're in trouble, so it doesn't make sense to, like, go for the fireball. Try and high roll a bit. But yeah, amazing what a difference that goblin just being, like, you know, in one of those three squares and the. Uh, Pogo being one fold with a, with a man. But this is a lovely turn. Elliot and I did this live, and uh, I called this. Um, you know, I called this play, which, I, which of course I would have never made. But Rick has Rick dice. I mean, I would have made. I'd, I'd have tried, but I've never completed. But Rick managed to roll all of the dice and gets this wonderful, uh, wonderful little screen. There. So he's, you know, it was a real, real good, real good effort. Yeah, it was all the dice, but I mean, it was only, it was only played to go for. So it, it's literally like I, call, I called it almost instantly that, you know, you make the little corner cage there and, and then just try and make a bunch of dodges because you got, you got stunty and dodge, right? It's not that crazy to make all the dodges. Um, and. He can leap over. Um, this was this was so. There's an argument here. There's a, there is an argument here for something Rick could do. And I I don't know if it's correct or not. But at the moment he's gonna have to three plus three plus right with uh, without anything. What he could do, what he could look at doing, is blitz with this goblin. Go to here. If you don't pop dodge, go to here. And then you can 1D him, and it's a 3+, plus, but on a 5+, plus, it, it's if you're doing 3, right? So you, you're, doing, you're doing a 3+, plus with a re-roll. So you are adding just a 1 in 9 chance to fail instantly. And then another 1 in 9 chance to fail if that works. <laughs> and then a 1 in 3 that might not get you the pow. <laughs> but if it gets you the push, then at least you get to leap. So, like, you know, it, it's interesting... I'm, I'm not sure if that, that that could be better, but I'm not. I'm really not sure because you don't want to use your reroll, right? So like this probably gives you a better chance to not use your reroll trying that first, but maybe it's a lower chance to succeed overall. But uh, Rick just goes for the three three. And he gets it. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that either. Did he fail all three kills? No, he made them all. Diced. So, defending gets a substantially harder now, of course. If he had just managed to, like, you know, not had to, but like, he had to use the wizard there. I agree completely with his use of the wizard, but you know. If only he still had his wizard, if only he still had Ripper or Morg. But he has lost pretty much everything good on his team except the bomber and the soul. He uses the bribe on the soul. Uh, some people thought about using the bribe on the fanatic, so at least you've got strength 7 on the line. But, you know, ultimately you're going to have to try and, like, hit down the carrier, right? And to hit down the carrier, having a, having a sword hit, hit down the carrier is, is much better than, uh, I think, than having a strength 7 on the line. But it's doable, right? He's got the little, he's got the, he's got the Cindy, Cindy formation here, so. The bomber dribble snot formation. I guess Cindy got more play due to her bomber getting banned. Oh no, no, I thought he took a while to ban bomber, so it's probably still the bomber dribble snot formation. Quick snap, so there you go. Rick could have just like, got a deep kick here, right? And it would have been really difficult for Andre. But unfortunately, it's a short kick and a quick snap to make it even easier for him. And now with those KOs back, and he's taken zero damage.
could hit this saw here. It's lovely play here. Lovely play here that I don't think Andrea will do. <laughs> not, not as an insult. But, you know, you could block this guy to here. And then put this player in here. And then block him, chain him forward. So you get this hit there. And then you get to blitz the uh, saw. Really nice. And he's already not done it yet. But I really like doing that. I, I tend to like, like you know, making that chain anyway, just to get generate additional hits on a quick snap. But here it could have got him to blitz the saw, which would have been amazing. Like, it's so good getting to blitz the saw. Maybe don't pile it. Okay, well, it's okay, KO anyway. Yeah, the beast is pretty small, yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me what I already know, Death One. <laughs> and the way he's moved these people around, I think he—I think it wasn't costing him much. I think he should have done the diagonal blocks to uh, hit the soul. You're just gonna have to GFI to score. I like doing the GFI here already. Gets you further away from the bomber. And uh, if you fail and fall on the ground, at least you know you haven't done it on turn 16. So whatever happens, Rick has got at least a 3% chance to win. <laughs> Woo! I wonder if you should have... Um, Just gone for this bomb before the blitz, right? Like it's completely reasonable to just do the blitz and get people, you know, in positions first. But will it be enough? I lo love the uh, love the saw back here. Aims there. I think that's the correct square to aim for. Doesn't get the four plus knockdown. Diced. Walk down is pretty good because even on a push, um, the noble warrior. Right, if the if the warrior had even just pushed him, he would have got stink on the bomber. But with the bot down, he doesn't. But this isn't easy for Andre, right? He doesn't have that many players free. And again, no push, but he does get this guy in now, so that's a minus two on the bomber. And now it's a minus four on the bomb. And there is another remove. And we were talking a lot here, uh, Elliot and I about where to go with the ball, and it wasn't very easy, but I actually really like where Andre went with it. But, you know, it's two chances for Rick here. As well, a few chances. This guy could have tried to dodge twice. He could have tried to just dodge twice, yeah. If you pop dodge, you don't do another one. If you pop dodge... You don't, but he could have, he could have tried to go here to um no oh, three dodges, oh god, three dodges, okay. So he could have tried there if you pop it, stop, there if you pop it stop, and there if you pop it don't stop to assist him. But that is three one and nines, isn't it? Which even if you make the first two, it makes the whole chances of it working pretty small. There is, you can just go for the fifty fifty activation to punch him. Or you could Go directly for the uphill here to push him back because to get the saw like so. Two way to get the saw hit you are uh, you punch with him, and then you saw, or you punch with him and you saw. The the plus point of this is if you get the four plus, it's amazing, right? Because you're pushing him away, and you're opening it up, and you've got him for recovery. So the troll is like really, really, really good if it works. The problem is if you fail, then you haven't got him there for next turn holding up the scramble for the ball. So it's. Uh, 
you know, took a little bit of thing. Yeah, oh yeah, so then eventually we, we agreed the best player was you dodge with the bombardier, see if the bombardier gets off the tentacles, and if he does, he assists the troll. And then the troll failed. The, the uphill works. So he gets to saw the ball. And he gets him down. Ooh. Yeah, he's got tackle, yeah. Flip me. But he makes all the dice there. And then he fails a one in nine there. This is, I mean, this is pretty good from Rick, right? Pretty good. But ultimately, it's just some... T like, and if this guy wasn't... If this guy wasn't... Uh, stupid, it would be a bit better as well. Sidestep keeps him in contact. It's the three dice. So we have diced. I mean, that's still good, forcing that Agrelius. And it wasn't just a 2D, 3 2, right? Because he needed to power the goblin because of sidestep. But then he put the stupid let, let him get three dice on it. But yeah, like with follows and stuff, he did have he did have enough stuff there to make it easier than it looked. And then the Nurgle win the toss. And that sadly is almost that. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's as close to over as it can be without being technically over. <laughs> El Yod here saying, don't say it's over, it's not over. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I mean, if Rick wins the toss, like, it's he's got half a chance but with no re-rolls, no big guys, it's just... There really isn't much. But at least, like you know, if Andrew had used the reroll on on the score, then at least uh, at least there would have been a shot of you know, like just a random dub skulls or whatever to maybe give Rick a shot. But now with the reroll as well, it's really, really is grim. Yeah, depending on where the uh, depending on where the stink is found in Khan, yeah. Short kick, not that the short is really matters here because Andre, of course, is in no rush to score. And in fact, if Andre were if I was Andre now, <laughs> I'd be doing the old hover over the SPPs to see who wants to score. Oh, beast. Could try for a beast touchdown. <laughs> it's maybe, a, that's maybe a bit extreme. Wouldn't hate it though, beast touchdown. I'm not sure I've even seen a beast touchdown in Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl 2. I guess I didn't play enough Nurgle. <laughs> you got me here, Dev. You got me. Yeah, because you can just make And then look at that, he fails the pickup. If that had only been the previous pickup, Rick would have won. Like, Rick, Rick was like a good... A good 10% or whatever to win, wasn't he, in the last turn? But not to be. Well, not 10, 12, 13, something like that. Going in for the uphill. Yeah. I 
I mean, none of it really matters, all right? Like, it didn't really matter wherever it went. <laughs> I, I, here, I, I thought, honestly, about moving this troll over here and lobbing, lobbing this goblin down the field just in case he did get the scatter in the crowd, right? My player... I think, so, I think, yeah, so it calmed down a bit because it was still almost a game at this point. Like, not really, but almost. Rick's play was to move the troll out of the disturbing presence range and then throw a goblin at the ball, um, you know, to help. Which is probably the best, like, highest odds of something working. But what I would have done is I would have moved the troll over here, thrown this goblin, like, you know, downfield, and then, then gone for this blitz, push him to there, ball in the crowd, Hope for the one in three scatter. And then at least like that gives you a chance to win, right? Because I don't see, even if this works, how you get a chance to win if it works, if you see what I mean. So I, I feel like the only win chance there was, was logging that button down and hoping that you not only do you get the dodge in, the uphill pals, the three and eight scatter, then the one and eight scatter all together to get it thrown in that way. Like I feel like that's the only way on earth you can possibly win this game. So it was right to go for that play, even though Rick's play was like the much better play for actually achieving anything. <laughs> OT's star play points do count. Yep, there was a there was a guy called Nama on Fumble who uh, deliberately would take his opponents to overtime if he could, just to farm SPPs in overtime. And uh, I did it myself once. <laughs> <laughs> this this pester goes on 72, so you could get two cars. That's something to think of. Or a completion and a touchdown, I guess. Okay, just farming kills then, alright, fine. Same difference. I mean, I did, I did both with my... I felt really dirty as well. I felt really dirty because... Uh, I deliberately hand, handed off to the wrong player. Deliberately handed off to the wrong player. So that I could say, oh no, I handed off to the wrong player by accident. Sorry, we'll have to go OT in it. Oh, it's really bad, isn't it? But I, I did do that because I just wanted to get more, get more star player points killing his team. <laughs> Which I guess I could have just said. I could have just been honest and said, I want to get more SVPs killing the team, but I didn't. I deliberately handed off to the wrong way to be more polite. There you go. So, um, he gets on 74, so... You want to you wanna just blitz with him now, right? You want to get that claw on hit, if possible. So I really like this, holding the goblin so that you can pull him next turn. So I, I actually don't like hitting the I actually don't like hitting this goblin this turn. I'd have just held him so that the claw pummer could have uh claw pummed him. Oh fair enough here Dad. Retrospective ban incoming. No it's alright. It's, it's alright now I'm sure the guy hasn't played for ten years but uh at the, yeah, at the time I did feel pretty dirty. I still do, which is I guess why I mentioned it. But I mean, it wasn't it wasn't breaking the rules or anything, was it? It was just kind of scummy. And even that's not even kind of scummy, right? It just well, it was scummy the way I did it, I guess. So yeah, everyone's down on the ground now, so you've just got to hand it off to the, the Pestigore to level in, haven't you? Very important to get a tackle on the Pestigore. Randall Fowl really wants to make sure no BS happens. It's kind of a two for one as well, I guess, isn't it? Because that stops him activating the troll. It's like protecting his team by stopping him going out of the tree. And obviously he's on 10 to activate that troll. So yeah, really, really nice from Andrew. 
You know, somebody said Rick didn't deserve to lose, and it's like... I mean, he, you know, first of all, Elliot likes to say nobody deserves anything. But also, Andrew didn't deserve to lose either, did he? You know, like he did. He did everything pretty much by the book. I quite like this formation on turn 15. Because it was that was really tough, turn 15. But I mean, Rick did, obviously. Did play great. And, uh, you know... Had, had quite a lot of the dice in the first half. But, um, you know, great effort, great effort from Rick. Really did. Really did do great. Got out AV Brock by 22, um, you know, in the end. But the first half was just really, like, he actually outbashed the Nuggle. It was such, the first half was just absolute thing of beauty, wasn't it? And then, uh, in the end, just the golfing, golfing teams showed. So there you go. Commiserations to Rick, congratulations to Andre. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.